Hey, what's up team? Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much to everybody who's been subscribing. The rate at which this is growing is so crazy and I'm absolutely geeked out over it. Today we're going to look at Faceplant. It just upgraded to version 2 and I just want to show you some of the new updates. All existing users get a free copy of this. So we go down here in the modulation section. This is the version that has been upgraded the most. The GUI, the noise section or oscillator section is pretty much the same. All the effects here are all pretty much the same, but as you may see, they are organized now. Same thing with this oscillator section or generator section. You can see that everything now has a proper category. So all of that is great. There are some visual updates. For example, when I choose to modulate something, now there is a direct visual reference to where this is going. I would say that was definitely one of the downsides of the plugin in the past. Uh, but here's a riff that I created so that I could just show you some of these upgrades. Here we go. Okay, so let's look at it here. We have an analog sawtooth wave going into a wave table. Here is a sine wave and you can pick the frame. So all of this stuff you can find in any synthesizer. There's a filter here. Okay, so let's go ahead and close and open that up. All right, so the magic happens when we start to create the modulation sources. I'm gonna add a little bit of reverb on lane one just to kind of give it some cream on top. Now let's go ahead and check out all the new features down here. So if I move my face out of the way, you can see that there are some great things. LFO table, curve, this is brand new. Audio follower, brand new. Pitch tracker. And to me, the most exciting of the bunch is the MIDI CC capability. Now I can control any parameter so long as I map it to this controller and it's really easy. Uh, you can also do the same with the pitch wheel and there's a great note gate feature as well. So let's get right into it. So when you instantiate this, all right, it looks like the traditional LFO table. And actually, why don't I go to version one really quick, which is right up here. You can see that we only have a kind of generic um, LFO here. Well, when I zip back to version two, now the options increase tenfold. You have complex shapes, morphing shapes, screams, all sorts of stuff. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to modulate the reverb so at the tail end of the progression you can hear it get a little bit more wet and mysterious check it out okay so without it then it would just be dry now I get the benefit of creating some movement, but then adding modulation to the reverb source. Okay, so this to me is where it gets really exciting. There's another kind of shape function and it's called curve. All right, so let me go ahead and enable that. And this I've modulated to the filter cutoff. Very common thing to do within synthesis. If you look at the shape itself, or it starts off, and then it kind of slopes downward. Check out what it sounds like. In seconds flat, you're already creating something that sounds special. Now, of course, you can have this set up to sync to host tempo or just have it set up to free tempo. So right now this is re-triggering every single time there's a new chord. We can also have this reverse. Check it out. So that right there just sounds crazy. Uh, let's try ping pong, here we go. Okay, and there's an infinity function as well. All right, let's go ahead and check out Audio Follower. I'll press play and look at the screen here just for some visual 
data. Okay, so this essentially is following the source signal, but we can modulate this. Something else that I would probably do is set this to modulate, let's say, the sense within the wavetable. Uh, I'll be subtle here. Okay, and I'll go ahead and add a convolution reverb to lane number three. Okay, so in order to really pull this off, I'll modulate back to the convolver here. So we'll take the curve and modulate, bring back that somewhere around there. that's pretty cool it's kind of hitting the reverb all right so you can be as subtle as you want you can be as intense as you want here check this out i'm gonna go ahead and create a midi c c now it looks very unassuming at first but this kind of ableton workflow can be really great because you can actually close these up minimize these to save some screen real estate so we'll do that now you can also create groups within this section by creating a new group. But for now, let's go ahead and map this. So I'll map this to my MIDI controller here. All right, so we'll click, raise that up. Okay, so then now I have a parameter in which I can control just about anything within the interface. So let's see, what would be really interesting? I would love to be able to create some kind of distortion. So uh, before I add distortion, I'm gonna click on unison here, uh, hear what this does. Okay, so we've come a long way from our basic sound when we just first started. And so now I'm gonna control modulation, but I wanna add, let's start with distortion. And if I need something else, I don't know, I'll experiment with fat trader or something. So here we go, we're gonna add distortion and I want this to be mapped to the drive parameter. And I want to kind of uh, control it by means of my own play style. So let's go ahead and try this out. We're going to modulate the drive. All right, I'll increase this. And let's start off at the very bottom. All right, we'll move the mod wheel. And you can see I have full control here. All right, press play. And I'll just go ahead and play this in myself. things are going to make a really big difference in the scope of your tracks, your songs, it's all about the little things once you start getting to the bottom of it. So a lot of great stuff here. You have the ability to remap. If you have MPE capability, you can actually utilize that. The last thing I'll show you here is a note gate. Now, in order to fully take advantage of this, I do have to bring up Logic Pro. So let's bring that back into the mix. And essentially, whenever kilohertz detects that there is some type of gap the plugin will cut everything including the effects and it just sounds really nice so i'm going to go ahead and bring back the plugs let's drop logic here and check this out
Okay, if you tried to pull that off without the note gate, it would sound like this. Yeah, it sounds really junior, sounds really rookie. What you really want is intention, deliberation with your music productions. Check this out. All right, I'll go ahead and just add a little bit of delay to the signal. Let's go ahead, try this out. Anyhow, those are some of the updates with Kilohertz face plan. Go ahead and check them out. Tell them that Eddie Gray sent you. They may give you a courtesy discount. Don't know. Got a lot of great things going on. Publishing contracts, all sorts of great stuff. Stay tuned to stay up to date, and I will catch you on the next one. Take good care. I'll see you.